Hello, comrades, and welcome back to Ushanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. В эфире программа Ушанка Show. My name is Sergei, and back in July of 1971, I was born in the USSR. Меня зовут Сергей, я родился в Советском Союзе. Press X to doubt this guy was a Soviet citizen. Fake accent, all Soviets poor, nobody had a phone or car. Lies. In my recent videos we talked about Soviet dachas as well as how the Soviet people stored their potatoes and other veggies. And today I would like to continue on this topic a little bit more. I got some additional information for you guys. So I asked my friend Dima, uh, you could see him on this picture next to me. Of course, photo was taken in early 80s. Uh, see if he can uh, find some the storage sellers in his town and take some photos and hopefully some videos. So Dima grew up in northern Ukraine in town called Garodnya, или Garodnya, not far from the village where we spent pretty much every summer till we grew up and went to college. But when he got married, he moved down south. He lives in town or small city called Krapivnitsky, and you probably never heard uh, that name. And I learned just recently because I knew that he lived in Kiravagrad, and I couldn't understand why suddenly his return address said uh, Krapivnitsky. I thought maybe he moved, but it, this uh, city has quite an interesting history about naming and renaming. So we're gonna. Quickly pause, uh, talk about Soviet dachas and Soviet cellars, and talk about a uh, short history of his town. So the city currently known as Krapivnitsky was founded back in 1754, and its original name was Elizavet Grad. So it was named after Russian Empress Elizaveta. After October Revolution of 1917, thousands of Towns and villages were renamed, of course, and Elizavetgrad was renamed back in 1924, and the new name was Zinoviovsk. I bet those viewers who are interested in Soviet history may recognize familiar sounds, Zinoviovsk. So yes, uh, if you thought about Grigory Zinoviev, one of the leaders of the October Revolution, that's correct. Uh, Grigory Zinoviev was born in Yelizavetgrad, so in 1924 uh, that town was renamed after him and became Zinoviovsk. But that name Zinoviovsk uh, didn't stick for too long. Only 10 years later, Comrade Stalin discovered that Comrade Grigory Zinoviev wasn't actually a good comrade, he was actually enemy of the people. So. He was executed and the town was renamed once again. On a side note, there are rumors, and I mean rumors, I read about some declassified letters of Zinoviev written to Lenin. It appears that they were a love couple, Lenin and Zinoviev. They were in love. That's one of the reason why Lenin never had children. I neither can confirm nor deny those allegations. It's a good topic to uh, discuss and dig into. But I just want to let you know that uh, according to Comrade Stalin, Grigory Zinoviev was a traitor. He was a Trotskyist, although Zinoviev originally helped Stalin to kick Trotsky out of the Soviet Union. But in the end, in 1936, he was himself executed. So what's next for our town? In 1934, so two years before Zinoviev was executed, uh, Zinoviovsk was renamed into Kirova. And once again, if you're interested in Soviet history, you may, you may recognize that name, Kirov. So Sergei Kirov was another Bolshevik, and by 1930s he became a party leader of Leningrad, currently St. Petersburg. He was extremely popular in his city. But unfortunately, on December 1st of 1934, he was assassinated. And there are some uh, rumors, once again, that Stalin uh, had something to do with it. He was jealous how Kirov was popular. And Kirov's killing was pretty much the beginning of the Great Purges. 
It's pretty much that's when uh, Stalin announced, look, there's enemies everywhere around us and among us. So after death of Kirov, as you see, Zinoviev was uh, shot two years later, as well as many other Soviet leaders, old Bolsheviks. So for five years, from 1934 till 1939, it was Kirova. And in 1939, it was renamed into Kirova Grad. So Grad is the Russian word for town. So Lenin Grad. And here we got Kirov Grad. So it's it's kind of similar what Germans say, Burg. So Peterburg used to be, then became Petrograd. And same here, we got Kirova Grad from 1939. And just recently, in 2016, Kirovograd was renamed once again into Krapivnitsky. Uh, Krapivnitsky, Mark Krapivnitsky, he was a famous Ukrainian uh, theater actor in theaters, and uh, he was uh, born not far from Elizavetgrad, Zinoviev, Kirova, Kirovograd. So, in his honor, and because of the Ukrainian law against uh, Soviet heritage, uh, they renamed the town to Krapivnitsky. I apologize for this long detour, but I thought it's kind of interesting to discuss uh, how names were changed of this town. So now it's called Krapivnitsky. And let's take a look what remained from the Soviet era cellars uh, in the modern Ukrainian town. So this is modern day's photo of Krapivnitsky, and that's what the field of cellars look like so you see there's a i believe it's a khrushchevka apartment in the background and instead of play area you have this uh, poorly maintained lawn which has a little tiny buildings popping right with the lids and of course depends how much uh, money people had or uh, what access they had to the building materials that could be just the boards with the bricks covering the whole or it'll be proper, uh, like a entry little door and a lock. And right there you also have um, poles and ropes uh, for drying laundry. So it's like a dual purpose area. You got cellars underground and uh, area for drying your clothing on the top. Since no one has clothing dryers, apartments are just too small. So people usually dry their clothes outside or on the balconies. There's another fine example. Here you could tell that the owner definitely worked in construction business because he had access to a lot of concrete. So he actually made a little path so he doesn't have to walk in the mud if it was raining. So a lot of concrete were used for this particular cellar. And then you have a proper lid and a little ventilation uh, piping because you want to make sure you have your cellar ventilated, otherwise your potatoes and other veggies will rot. Here's another really interesting picture. It almost looks like an underground hobbit town, right? You got these cute little uh, towers, which is a ventilation piping, and you have a lid. doesn't look like it has a lock on it right now. It seems like they had a problem with ventilation, so the guy propped his um, door I think there's a better word in English, it's not really a door, like a lid. And he put a couple of bricks to improve ventilation. So definitely had an issue with moisture in his little cellar. So hey comrades, how about a quick lesson of Russian language? Urok ruskava yazyka. Pogreb. Pogreb. So in Russian we call such storage cellars pogreb. Don't mix it up with a cellar like I know in New York State they call basements as cellar. In Russian it's podval. But pogreb, it's that small underground usually uh, storage area for your food items. Pogreb. Pogreb. And here uh, we have the view what it looks like when you open the lid. So it almost looks like a nuclear bomb shelter, right? So this person definitely also worked in construction. Because I don't think you can dig that deep uh, by hand. Definitely excavation. An excavator was involved. And a lot of concrete and metal rebars were used. So that's, I don't know, probably at least 12 feet deep. So you want to get as deep as possible because that's what the temperatures are stable. And the same no matter it's the summer or winter. So this is how it looks access to your cellar. 
and here's the view from the cellar up to the sky and I read there's the cases when people went to get their stuff and if they didn't have a proper ventilation uh, you could actually die uh, because when veggies start getting rotten they consume oxygen replace it with uh, other gases and there were cases when people went down and never came back up so it's quite critical if you have such a pogrib is to have proper ventilation of course you want to prop your door open in case you, you feel dizzy you can call for help or try to race back up so in this picture you see uh, how the floor looks like and the walls as I said that's some uh, pretty solid construction so it looks like poured uh, concrete walls and the brick floor and then you have some uh, marinated tomatoes in jars and just empty jars uh, sitting down on the floor there's another view of the floor on this side walls look like cement blocks so it appears that whatever people had on hand they used so he had some cement blocks so one side was built with blocks other side was poured concrete and uh, there's a bottles was drinking water I know when Krapivnitsky they have shortage of water quite often they got their central water supply shut off so people keep some drinking water in the storage that way the water stays semi-cold and just random stuff and as you see there have some little uh, the bottles on the left those three bottles they sit on a little like a shelf slightly raised from the floor so it looks like they used to have a problem with water get into the cellar so they build little platform to keep stuff off the concrete floor and here is a nice shelving unit and a lot of jars with who knows what I mean it looks like maybe peaches in some of the jars uh, some have maybe crushed tomatoes maybe some uh, jellies or jams uh, so once again it's the best to store it in semi a cool area and a lot of apartments they don't have air conditioning so during the summer apartments are pretty warm and they don't have a lot of storage room especially Khrushchevka apartments so besides storing potatoes for the winter time it's also a great uh, solution to store your uh, conservatsia they call it in Russian so all this pickled stuff and the jams and jellies and you can tell the size of the jars are quite large some of them those three liters so it's a um, pretty much one gallon size uh, glass jars some of them smaller but most of them pretty big there is no little tiny cute jars all right so what I uh, managed to understand uh, that water that the guy stores in his cellar he brings the water like when they go to the river uh, to swim uh, he, whatever he has uh, jars he fill them with water they call it brown water so that's the way to save money he likes to water his flowers but since there is a meters now on every apartment we used to have no meters right so you could use water 24 7 you just paid flat fee now everyone has a water meter so in order to save money not to pay uh, for water that he's gonna waste on flowers uh, whatever they got a chance to get free water they'll fill their those plastic bottles and uh, store them in a cellar and they use them when they need it and also they uh, as you see they were kind of working get water that's leaked inside of the cellar I guess they know the spot where the water is dripping and they keep that um, container there and now they uh, move the water with, by buckets outside and dump it on the ground and for your view and pleasure and uh, they also filmed cellar from the bottom so you could tell a guy had access to some metal because nicely welded metal ladder you couldn't buy anything like that in the stores and you could see a general overview of the cellar so it's a decent size uh, unit and it has a lot of storage space but unfortunately it's not uh, absolutely waterproof so they have issues with uh, water getting in and now my friends we're going to visit another cellar is showed in pogreb and this one I said looks like it has a ventilation issues so they have bricks kind of keeping the lid a little bit ajar but it's still locked has a chain and a nice size lock similar to what I have in here we have the view when the lid is wide open and once again you need to keep in mind everything is custom built and custom smuggled out of some factory so the guy had a friend who was a welder and he was a welder you need to get someone who had access to bricks 
So all this project is just a lot of a lot of uh, people involved helping each other. Someone will steal bricks. Someone will made you at his factory the lead. Uh, to put it all together, it was a quite a big effort. And here we have the view. What's going on inside of the cellar? We got the ladder. So this is a different type. So just someone didn't have access from enough metal, so they built the ladder out of wood. And once again, you want to make sure the ventilation is right and uh, there is no light. So they didn't, or they couldn't, uh, bring electrical wires and install lights. So you usually go down there during the daytime or you bring a flashlight with you. Now when you go down to this pogrip, once again you have a shelf unit with a lot of pickles. Salone agurtsi. And kind of interesting, the jars on the bottom shelf, they have so-called kapronovaya krishka. So that's plastic lids. On the top it's the proper lids. And looks like walls were uh, made with normal red brick and a lot of concrete. <laughs> so it looks like this pogreb, uh, this cellar is still being actively used. They have, uh, I'm not sure what's in those sacks on the top right, but they got some clothing items hanging even and potatoes on the bottom. But those nets, kind of modern nets, we never used plastic nets for potatoes back in the Soviet day. Uh, so as you see, this uh, cellar still looks neat, clean, and being used. And once again, another video kind of gives you a better idea how the cellar looks inside. I'm very thankful for Dima's efforts and also his friends to give us this beautiful story, this beautiful illustrations of the Soviet cellars, Sovietskie Pogribe. And I asked, it's dying out, you know, we don't have socialism anymore, lifestyle changed, something got more expensive like housing, something got uh, way cheaper like potatoes. So for many people it doesn't make sense anymore to go through all that struggle and go to the dacha, plant potatoes, dig potatoes, bring them back to the city, put them in a cellar, then go in and out of the cellar to get potatoes. Uh, potatoes got so cheap that people don't bother with that anymore. They just buy them in the grocery stores as many as they want because tomorrow there'll be more potatoes available. There was no issue with that anymore. So it's dying out, but it's interesting to see for this flashback of the Soviet lifestyle. It's a lot of work just to build a cellar and considering there's no uh, many items, construction items weren't available to build that it's insane how much effort put people to put in just to store their potatoes. Just think about it. Well, comrades, I hope you enjoyed that little glimpse in the Soviet cellar situation. And as a cherry on the top, I want to show you handmade Soviet-era garage storing Moskvich car, which Dima also filmed for me. I find... That's a quite ingenious engineering decision uh, how they made this tiny garage to protect their precious car. Enjoy that video and thanks for watching Ushanka Show. До свидания. Goodbye. <laughs>
friendly reminder that my book American Diaries is available on Amazon.com or shoot me an email if you would like to have a signed copy. Thank you! And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka Show. For as little as one dollar you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet